The first pre-season test of the 2019 Formula 1 season is over and throughout the sessions we've seen a few developments spring up on a couple of Formula 1 cars. Uh, Gary Anderson is with me to help me talk through them and uh, so Gary what have you seen at the back of this wonderful Red Bull here? Well yeah the Red Bull obviously it's one of the interesting cars because aerodynamically Adrian Newey is reputed for building one of the best. Um, basically the regulations limits you to a two element rear wing. This is what they call the slot gap here and this is the section that opens whenever the DRS is uh, activated. But it's this detail out here that's interesting because the end plates are allowed to be a certain thickness but most teams make them as thin as possible and then they put these little elements in here to make a, a more multi-element wing here. In Red Bull's case, this is a three-element wing. This is a slot gap, and this is a slot gap. And they're also trying to create some downforce in this area here, because for 2019, the wing was made wider uh, for a certain height. And down below that, it has to be narrower. So there's a section here which really you can do what you want with and try to make some downforce out of it. And this was Red Bull's initial interpretation. But if we go on to... Uh, what they've developed, uh, obviously, in the wind tunnel and then tested back here uh, in the la last couple of days. We see the change. It's still the same two-element wing, uh, slot gap. And then here they've gone to a four-element wing, that one, two, three, four. And there's just three slot gaps there. So they're working this part of the wing here, this little se tiny section, a lot harder. And it meant that they had to take this part of the end plate away. I don't know whether they cut it away or whether it was just actually you know, a whole new package. But to be honest, this part here affects this section quite dramatically. And that's not the only thing it affects. If you go down into the, to the brake ducts and the diffuser, now this is, what, this is a brake duct, and basically you're allowed to do what you want for a certain width and a certain height. Now this is just a multi-element turning vein, turning the airflow up in between that uh, tyre and the end plate. So it's a very important part to make the diffuser work because all of this here is what we call the back of the diffuser. All these little slot gaps are there to let air flow through it to stop it from the airflow from separating. The important thing is to get the end of it to turn around here so the low pressure area behind this tyre actually affects the whole back of the car and makes the whole back of the car work as one sort of diffuser. And then Jake, I think you want to uh, talk about these little stays. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Red Bull turned up uh, in testing uh, with these wing stays uh, today, obviously with the new rear wing. and. This could be one or two reasons. Gary and I have got differing on opinions on what they possibly could be. Uh, my thought is that Red Bull aren't particularly happy with perhaps their wing structure, for example. So perhaps losing this particular bit here has reduced a little bit of rigidity. So my feeling is that they're perhaps trying to bolster that a little bit. But Gary, you have a different yeah. opinion. Well, in reality, the floor itself, this is this is quite a, it's a sort of carbon fibre um, composite construction but this part of the floor right here is relatively flexible as such so these stays here would support this part of the floor because obviously by doing these changes here they're having a little bit of a problem with the rear of the car trying to get in just more downforce um, so that supporting the floor here means at least the floor is where you designed it to be because it's very easy for this part to flex up and down and if you get a variable component like that it can affect the downforce so better to put the stays on just do your data running and see if it makes any difference and then work from there. So who's right or who's wrong? Red Bull, please let us know if you fancy it. And we've seen further rear wing developments down the grid as well because Renault uh, have turned up in pre-season testing with something a little bit different to what they launched with. They've come up with a very, very interesting end plate solution. So Gary, would you be able to talk us through it, please? Yeah, well, just one thing before that happens. This, this is, the again, the, re the rear flap which opens with the DRS and we saw uh, Daniel Ricciardo, one of these broken two down, well, probably down through the middle, to be honest. This actuator here seemed to force it in the wrong direction, and he lost it on the pit straight, spun at the first corner, and almost hit the barrier, but not quite, so it saved Renault a lot of embarrassment because they didn't have any spare rear suspension. But the area here that I was talking about in the wing end plate um, that Red Bull had been playing with and changing, you can see they've actually got three sort of turning vanes there to try and help the airflow turn. Um, and that, again, you know, it helps the rear wing, it helps the rear brake duct, it helps the diffuser. If you can get it all right, you can actually get some decent downforce out of this area. So I think we'll see lots of developments there as the next test goes by. So moving on round to the barge boards at Renault, which are also a different specification to what they launched with. Uh, Renault have squared off this top flap here. Uh, it was originally a little bit more like Mercedes was, so that they had the mounting point here and then the barge board kind of fell away. 
but they've squared off the top edge here. You can see all the intricate little fins and serrations around here, and it's just pulling as much airflow as round uh, as possible. And this area here, the uh, the fins around the side pod, they've also been changed as well because Renault started off with their what they like to call the aero cap design. It was a a cat-shaped element that had four little legs that popped up like this. But they've changed it for something a little bit more, I wouldn't say rudimentary as such, but a little bit more deliberate in trying to manage as much tire wake as possible and trying to salvage something from it, really, because tire wake is very, very difficult, isn't it, to manage, Gary? Well, tire wake is very difficult. This, this part of the, the barge board here is about pulling air out from underneath the front of the chassis and pulling it out as fast as possible. Um, and basically, you're pulling it into a, a wake that's been created by this front wheel. So you want to pick it up here and then try and realign it as such to go do it through the side of the car or down the side of the car without interfering with the real downforce producing devices. So, yeah, it's all, this is sort of one component and this is another component, but they've all got to work together. There's lots of little components in through here, all sorts of turning vanes and vortex generators. So very, very complicated area. Very difficult to see, but uh, that's life. And so another barge board to look at as well, which was also changed from launch specification. Uh, Toro Rosso have turned up with something a little bit different to what they originally had. It was originally three different panels all interlinked together, but it's a little bit different now. Uh, Gary, would you be able to talk us through? Yeah, it's, a, it's one big panel, but they, this here works a bit like a wing. So basically these slot flaps here means you can, you can turn the airflow harder. You can really put more curvature into it. And instead of getting a separation problem on the back side of it, it's feeding in high, high energy airflow in here to keep the surfaces attached. And then all that flow will be turned downwards. And this sort of scalloped turning vein here helps turn that airflow back up again, um, which then scavenges the floor in this area. So basically you're using this here as a what's it called a small diffuser to try and create downforce from the front corner of the floor. Um, allowing the, the, the rear diffuser to actually work the airflow from the middle of the car and create a lot more downforce down through the center of the car. So it all works in harmony with everything else. It's, it's no individual component. It's just working with all the rest of the car. We've also got quite interesting mirrors here as well. It's something that Ferrari turned up with last season. They're almost using the, the shape of the mirror as a bit of a shroud to drive airflow through. Yeah, I mean, the, at the back of that, obviously, is a, a panel that is the, is the mirror itself. But by taking the airflow through that, it's, 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 a bit, um, it's a bit strange because every time the airflow hits something, a leading edge of something like that, there's what's called a separation point. And basically, that's where the point where the airflow decides whether to go for the top or underneath. And on the mirror, if you imagine that being closed in, it's quite a big area to decide, I'm going that way, I'm going that way, or around the sides. So by opening it up, and there'll be a little slot around the glass, basically, so that airflow can go straight through and come out between the glass and that. So it means there's less disturbance to other stuff further downstream. So it's, it's just a small detail, but it, it's very important. Small details are everything. And so there's been another development at the rear of the car as well with Alfa Romeo. Uh, they've turned up this brand new fin they've run over the last couple of days, and they've also included a little T-wing here. Gary, uh, What's the reasoning behind this? Well, yeah, this this is we've called it for a T-wing, as you say, um, and as you can see, this one here is sort of three-dimensionally twisted. And um, basically, what you're trying to do is the airflow coming over the car because of the sort of engine area and the top of the side pods. It's not uniform. It's not flowing in one direction. It's actually sort of fairly three-dimensional. So what you're trying to do with this is to pick up that airflow and introduce it to the underside of the rear wing uh, as uniform as possible to allow the wing to make best use of it because this is the this is the big downforce producing device that's on the back of the car. The other interesting thing is these mounts for the wing. Now, a lot of teams just have one mount, but on the, um, on the Alpha, they've got two. And the reason for them doing this is because a wing looks like it produces downforce from the top surface, but it really doesn't. It produces all its downforce from the bottom surface. So if that came up and mounted into the bottom of the wing, it would disturb a, a, you know, quite a wide section of that wing, and it would stop it making downforce. So up here, it does a lot less, lot less problem, basically, in uh, restricting the wing flow. Another development, uh, we're moving to Ferrari now. We've got one of Giorgio Piola's fantastic illustrations uh, on the screen, and it's this duct here. Uh, it's something that Williams and a couple of other teams like Mercedes ran last season, and Ferrari have decided to include it now. Gary, what's it all about? <laughs> well, cooling is a big thing in a Formula 1 car. You've got so many bits and pieces. You've got water, oil, intercooler, hydraulics, uh, electronics, electrics all about airflow to try and cool the car. And any airflow you use to cool the car, you really can't use for downforce. So you try and squeeze in as much as possible uh, cooling ducts wherever you can. 
the regulations have a, a maximum width for anything for cooling the car, uh, cooling exits in this in this section of the car. But so there's a small place here. Some people use louvers. Some people use an, an opening. But basically, inside this inlet duct, which is what this is, the radiator sits. Big flat radiator sitting here, and that corner of it, because of the chassis, is someone that doesn't get a lot of airflow. So if you can connect that corner of it up to a, a low pressure area, the flow is much better inside that inside corner near the chassis. And this little detail here will probably set up some type of flow that will help exit that, that duct so a vortex will come out of here, pick that up and extract that hot air out of there. So it's just efficiency of cooling, trying to get the most cooling for the least air used to try to make the car stay at a stable temperature. And finally, uh, over the last couple of days, we've finally seen the emergence of the Williams FW42, and we're finally going to get to have a little bit of a close-up look at what it's got. So one thing that is prevalent, Gary, is these very, very interesting suspension wishbones. Now, you're probably a much better vehicle dynamicist than I'll ever be, so would you be able to talk me through them, please? Well, yeah, for, for quite a few years now, Formula One cars have had a very angled wishbone package from the from the wheel to the that chassis that wishbones went up quite a lot but that gives you quite a lot of jacking in a corner it jacks the front of the car up when you laterally force load it up on the, on the tire that can be quite good because you actually lose a little bit of front down force with it so the higher the the force on the tire that you lose a little bit of front down force so instead of the car being very pointy it's actually more controlled however it doesn't do the tire much good because that all about the tire is trying to get the maximum contact patch onto the ground. If you haven't got the maximum contact patch on the ground, you don't get the maximum grip. So this geometer here puts the wishbones quite a lot flatter, which means the, the wheel goes up and down more sympathetically to the tire. It doesn't really hurt the aerodynamics as far as blockage is concerned to the side pod, but it does mean you've got this. This is part of the upright assembly as such, and inside of here somewhere is the, the bolt or the joint that links this part to this part. Um, so the bottom wishbone has to go with it and creates a suspension geometry. But there's a little bit of controversy because the regulations are a little vague as to what you can have that's flexible. And some teams feel this bit here is a bit too flexible because obviously if the wheel turns, it's all really well connected up. So something must flex to allow it to turn. So there's going to be a little bit of an argument for that. And while we're on that part, this is what we call the brake duct. And obviously, and here goes all the, the, the cool air to cool the brakes and this these little fins are here to stop bits of rubber going down in there because the, the tire throws off a lot of rubber and that catches it and stops it uh, from affecting the brakes so it, it's it's different i believe in it <laughs> um this part here might suffer a little bit of uh, legality problems but we'll see as time goes by and one final little detail from the williams is this very very interesting mirror assembly it's almost flat it sweeps inwards and comes out and it looks almost like a, a, a touchscreen phone a smartphone so Gary why have they come up with this particular design well Paddy Lowe actually thinks the technical director at the Williams that he should get a prize for this because <laughs> or they should get a prize for it because it's such it's different but basically this is the is the glass panel it's a flat panel and they've got uh, I suppose you might call it two sides of the housing that uh, we saw on the Toro Rosso um, so they've, they're allowing the airflow to hit that flat panel, but be di redirected by this. A, as you can see, it's a sort of wing shape. So it pulls the airflow over the top of it, so it doesn't create the same blockage. Um, it's, it's actually very angled, so the airflow is wanting to go this way, but this, this turning vein is sort of stabilizing it a little bit. But the whole mechanism of this thing here really now is that the teams are allowed to have this piece. This is higher than actually you're allowed to have components on the car because it's a rear wing, a rear view mirror um, bracket. But this becomes a turning vein to allow them to do more airflow management, I suppose you might call it. It's in an illegal area for anything else other than a bracket for the mirror. So, you know, the teams and the engineers will find solutions to everything. They just poke holes in the regulations and look for all the grey areas. And this is one of them.